At this point, click Go to License Application. Electronic Signature Agreement. This is creating a legal agreement between yourself and the IMLC. It is important that you review all of this information before proceeding. Once you agree to the use of electronic signatures, click this box to begin the application. This application is made up of seven steps, qualification, education, background, your core data or demographic information, your affidavit and consent, your payment, and then the completion of the application. Start by entering your name into the application. and your national provider identifier number or your NPI number. This is a 10 digit number. And then you will answer these initial application questions. All of these answers must be yes or the application will stop. I have read and understood the qualifications to practice medicine in the compact states. I attest that I am qualified and understand that pursuant to the IMLCC's rules, all fees are non-refundable. I understand that inaccurate or missing information may be grounds for rejection of my application. Please carefully review the application documents before applying. I have reviewed the criteria to select a state of principal license and confirm eligibility to designate a compact state as my SPL. I have a full and unrestricted license in a compact state. And at this point, you will select your state of principal licensure. You'll enter the license number and the expiration date. This all dates on this application can either be manually entered or entered using the calendar to the right. Now you will enter the four qualifiers for the application. Understand that only one of these qualifications must apply. For demonstration purposes, I will enter all four into this application. My residential address, this is where I will receive documentation from the IMLC, my SPL, and my participating member boards that are issuing me licenses. Again, you can either type in the state information or use the drop down menu. For 25% of practice, this is a free form text box. Please provide a statement regarding how you determined that 25% or more of your practice occurs in this state. So I'm saying last year. I saw 500 patients, all of which are located in the state of Colorado. Next is your employer information. This is the name, address, and phone number of the employer that authorizes your practice of medicine in this state. And finally, your federal tax ID, which is also your social security number. At this point, <clears throat> you will hit the next button. And it will take a few seconds to go to the next page. The second page, you'll enter the information for your medical education. At the top of the page, at the top of every page, you will see your name and NPI number. First question is, 
Are you a graduate of a medical school accredited by the Liaison Committee on Medical Education or the Commission on Osteopathic College Accreditation? Answer is yes. Enter the school's name and the graduation date and which degree that you received. The second question, have you passed each component or step of the USMLE or the Complex USA within three attempts or any of their predecessor examinations accepted by your SPL medical board? This drop-down menu will provide you names of the individual exams, or if you took a predecessor exam, you can click Other Exam, and a free-form text box will appear to enter that exam name. For our purposes, I'm going to use USMLE. Have you successfully completed graduate medical education approved by the ACGME or the AOA? And here, enter your residency information, its completion date, and the name of your specialty program. And finally, your special specialty certification. Do you hold specialty certification or a time unlimited specialty certificate recognized by the ABMS or the AOA BOS? And again, board eligibility does not qualify. If you do not have a lifetime certification, answer no, and then enter the date of the expiration date of your current certification. And click next to go to the next page.